Good morning. Good Chicles, the country church, Marion, Texas. A short drive to worship the Lord in a relaxed atmosphere. Amen. So this morning we consider blessing the assembly. And as I studied this passage, the points of the message became clearer and quicker for me than did the title of the message. <laughs> there were so many titles that we could have laid on it. And then I saw the blessing to the assembly. And I thought if we ever need a blessing, it's now. Amen. Amen. Everything that we're going through, uh, if there was ever a need for a blessing, dear Lord, it's now. So the Lord lays out a sequence of events that bring a blessing upon the assembly. You know, sometimes we want this blessing to, to fall upon us, and we need, it, our, we need to get in a position to catch it. We need to be in a position to receive it when God bestows it. So there are several things we want to look at this morning. One is the prominence of prayer. The Bible says, And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from, behind, from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven, and he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, the Bible says, when Solomon made an end of praying. And I thought about this, and I realized, Jim, that there comes a time when we need to say amen. amen. And there's a conclusion here. And we're saying amen, Lord, it shall be so. And we need to rise up to the task that he's laid out for us. Now, we can stay there on our knees, and maybe some of us should, but there comes a time when we need to stand up and get about the Father's business. I remember Moses as he led the children of Israel through the Red Sea. And I have a sanctified imagination, and you've got to be able to see this with your mind's eye. Here they are. They've got the Red Sea in front of them, and they've got Pharaoh's armies behind them. <clears throat> now, I'm sure that they were praying, but I have a feeling that they were also whining. And there comes a time when Moses basically says, it's time to quit crying and start crossing. Nothing wrong with praying. Nothing wrong with being fervent in our prayer, but there comes a time that we need to quit crying and start crossing. So, the same is true today. When Solomon had made an end of praying, he got up. Now, I also noted his position in prayer. Solomon arose, <coughs> excuse me, from kneeling at the altar, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. <clears throat> and the reason that hit me so hard, and Phil, I don't know if you remember, that we had a lady that approached us and said that if we didn't pray in a certain manner, in a certain position, that we were quenching the Holy Spirit of God. Actually left the church because of it, because we didn't pray in a way that was pleasing to her. So I thought about that as I came to this text. And uh, let me share with you some certain positions on prayer. You can pray sitting, 1 Chronicles 17, 16 through 27. You can actually pray sitting. Here in 1 Kings 8, 54, you can pray kneeling. Exodus 34 says you can pray bowing your head. Nehemiah 9, 5 says that you can pray standing. You can pray in 2 Chronicles 6, 12, and 13 with uplifted hands. You can pray walking, 2 Kings 4 through 35. 
<coughs> you can pray in that, on this walking deal. I, I, I thought about it. Joan prays walking. She'll walk a mile out there and she'll pray all the time. It's easier for me to pray sitting. <laughs> but anyway, you can pray walking. You can pray prostate. Joshua 7, 6. Matthew 26, 39. But it's more important that you pray than the position in which you pray. Amen. And sometimes people lose sight of that. It's when you pray, not if you pray, not how you pray, but when you pray to the Lord. There's that prominence of prayer. Well, and then there was the praise for the protection. Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all that he has, all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Praise the Lord who has given us rest. Given rest to his people. Do you realize that the world can't receive this type of rest? Because they don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in their heart and life that will give that rest. For them, it's not rest, but rather it's restlessness. Like the devil himself, driven. And do you see it closer that it comes to the Lord Return, the more restless the devil becomes. I mean, we can see it in various areas of our life. The closer it is to the Lord's return, the more active he gets. First Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, <clears throat> because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, Seeking whom he may devour. In the original it means that he's poised to pounce. You ever seen a cat that's ready to pounce on something? It can't hold still, at least mine can't. He's wiggling all over in anticipation of, of being able to pounce on something. Well, that's the devil. He'd like nothing better than to catch you napping. When I think of his rest in troubled times, I'm reminded of the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Mark chapter 4 reveals that in the midst of the storm, the boat's filling up with water. Jesus is asleep on a pillow. Now, wouldn't it have been something if instead of panic, the disciple would have found peace curling up next to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be something today for us in all of this pandemic, in all of this uncertainty, with all of this coming up about the election and so on and so forth, wouldn't it be something if we just curled up with the Lord Jesus, Amen. trusting him for those areas in our life that we can't see beyond. Well, verse 56 says that he's given rest according to all that he promised. In other words, you can rest upon his protection and you can rest on his promises. Second Timothy 2.13 says, If we believe not, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. He has not failed one word of all his good promise. Well, there's the permanence of the promises. Verse 57 says, The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. May the Lord God be with us as he was with our fathers, that he may not leave us nor forsake us. 
I don't know about you, but I need those same assurances today. In a world of uncertainty, I need those assurances. I need to remember that he's the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Something solid. And I'll tell you what, there's some change I'm sure that's good. I haven't found it yet, but I know that there's some out there. But uh, there's, there's things that, that are changing <coughs> that, that are good things. I plow with a tractor now instead of a mule. In fact, I don't even do that anymore. Let my grandson do it and uh, kind of go from there. But there's things that are changing for the good, but there's a lot of things that are changing that are not good. And we call out, we rely upon the God of our fathers. We need those assurances. Remember the song, Dave, in times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. The rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Well, we have a group out there that wants to tear down our history and historical monuments and statues. History is history. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. But it's still history, good or bad. Now the thing of it is, you can learn from it. You can correct some things about it. But you can't change it. The Alamo is still the Alamo. The war of northern aggression was still fought. Oh, you call it the war between the states. Okay. <laughs> Hitler still annihilated millions of Jews. We can learn from it. We can press on. Solomon looks back to his father David and his relationship with the Lord. But he said, now it's time to, to move forward. And what a lesson it is to us. We can't rest on those. We thank the Lord for them, but it's time for us to pick up and to move on. Amen. Well, he speaks about the path that he has laid. That he may incline, incline our hearts unto him to walk in all of his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. The path that he hath laid. The path that he has laid. May he incline our hearts unto him. Now I've prayed and you've heard me over the years. Lord, turn our hearts towards heaven. And I think how we sing and and yet a lot of times we don't comprehend what we're singing. We understand the tune, but we need to pay attention to the words. So many of them are a sermon in and of itself put to music. The Psalms were sung and not just said. And so we sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. <clears throat> in the midst of all of this that we're going through today, I hear more people talking about the Lord and his return than ever before. I mean people outside the circle of the church, you will, if you will. And they're seeing things and hearing things. And they're opening up. Well, the prayer is, may he keep us centered and devoted to
to him. I love that. The path that he has laid. That's the message. Not our path, but the path that he has laid. Following the life path that he's cleared. Watching the signposts. Walking at the pace and the rhythm that he laid down for our ancestors. So all of this is written that we might not sin as they did. That's what the scripture said. Had a man text me or messenger me or do anything but talk to me. And uh, he was saying, I, I think about those Jews and how many times they were disobedient and this and this and this. I said, do you have a mirror in your house? <laughs> Looking at the mirror, that's us. And those things were written that we might not sin as they did. But sometimes we do it on our own. Joan doesn't like it, but it's still true about a pig hitting an electric fence. You ever heard a pig hit an electric fence? Then you haven't lived yet. <laughs> I mean, at night, my dad had an electric fence around the oat patch to put the pigs in. And at night, <coughs> you could hear them. And they hit it with a wet nose. Now, if you don't think that's fun, try wetting your nose sometime and doing that, you know. <laughs> but then they'd go through it. And, and I used to watch them even. And they, they, knew, they knew that that, that electric fence was going to get them. And so they'd get from here to there away from it, and they'd lay their ears fat against, flat against their head. And they'd start walking to it. <laughs> And they'd go through it. You know what I found over the years? There's not a lot of difference between people and pigs. <laughs> really, I mean, the squeal is a little different, but... Uh, but we know we're going to get shocked. We know what's out there. We can see that blue flame about the, that long. But we're going to do it anyway, lay our ears flat against our head. Some of y'all have a little difficulty there, but I'm not going there. <laughs> well, Paul speaks of the path that was laid in Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which enter into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. I think of him going before us. Hebrews 4, 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I don't know about you, but that does something for me. Let us come boldly before his throne. Let us come boldly, knowing that he hears and that he answers. Well, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, uh, in Daniel 3, 24 and 25, Neb Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, and he rose up in haste, and he spake unto his counselors, now, you remember this about Daniel in the lion's den. No, this about Daniel in the fiery furnace. And he spake and he said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? 
They answered, and they said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered, and he said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. You see, he was there before they got in, and he was there after they got out. The Lord Jesus Christ was with them all the way. And a lost king noticed it. Isn't that something? Didn't we throw in three? And now I see four. And the fourth one is like unto the Son of God. That's awesome. Well, we're to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments. And then notice the purpose for the petition. In verse 59, it says, And let these words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be near unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God. And that there is none of it, none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at that day. Solomon knew what it was to stay before the presence of the Lord. Now think of that for just a moment. Some of us remember walking an aisle during an altar call and giving our heart to Jesus. But we haven't been back since. Now, I'm not talking about seeking to be saved again. I'm talking about keeping our petitions before him. Solomon didn't take God's protection for granted. You know what I'm afraid of? That we have. We've been blessed like no other nation has been blessed. We have been protected in that we've not had enemies on our shore, armies on our shore. We've had isolated events of fruitcakes, 9-11, and so on and so forth. But at the same token is we've been protected. We've been blessed. We thank the Lord for what we've stood for, how our men and women in uniform have fought to keep us free. But the same token is we've taken it for granted. It's all, how could God punish America? I mean, we are who we are, you know. And I think we've failed in this matter here. Solomon didn't take God's protection for granted. He didn't take that gift of his prosperity for granted. Didn't take his plan for his nation for granted. Lord, we need you. Day and night, we need you. Week in, week out, we need you. That was... One reason for the petition. Notice the song. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. And secondly, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is good and that there's none else. That all the people of the world may know that the Lord is good and there is none else. Folks, that's the reason. We have a job to do. Whether it's by live stream, whether it's person to person, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, 
whether it's in the grocery store or whether it's in the Dairy Queen, I had to think of that because I just had that yesterday. <laughs> but we have that responsibility to let people know that the Lord is good, that the Lord is in control, that He hasn't lost touch with His people. That's our responsibility. Well, it needs to be echoed throughout the earth. The Lord is good. There's no one else. And then three, obedient to our personal Savior. Following the life path that he has cleared. Alert and attentive to everything that he has laid out before us. Maybe in the midst of all of this, there will arise a sensitivity from his people saying, Lord, we've taken this for granted for too long. And we want to walk the way you'd have us to walk. We want to talk the way you'd have us to talk. We want to be sensitive to how you move in the midst of his people. Following the path that he has cleared, that he has laid out. So the question is, are you? Are you following the path that he has laid out? Have you followed the path that he's laid out? Will you follow the path that he has laid out? Lord, I'm coming to you this morning, realizing that I can't do this on my own. I need you. And Lord, I'm opening up my heart, my mind, my life to you. I want to know the joy of salvation. Let me tell you something. In, in spite of what's going on, you ought to be able to drive down the road and have a spell, just you and Jesus. Just thinking about your salvation if you are saved. And you ought to realize what a joy that it will create in your heart and in your life. I've seen some people, it's scary, Dave. I mean, what happened to you? I've been saved. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to hell anymore. I'm, I'm saved. Then you look like you're the cruise director for the Titanic trying to enlist the crowd. I've been saved. I'm excited about it. I'm praising the Lord about it. That's what he'd have us to do. Well, God's got a plan for your life and my life. And it begins at the beginning. It begins when we're born again. We've been born one time physically, we know that, but we need to be born a second time spiritually. Marvel not that I said unto you, it's absolutely essential that you must be born again. So if you're not saved, you can be saved. <clears throat> You'll never be saved until you realize you're lost. And if you realize that you're lost and you can't save yourself, and you realize that the Lord only is the one who can save you, and you ask him to forgive you and to come into your heart and life and save you, according to the scriptures, he'll do just that. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not maybe, not hope so, not could be so. It's a no-so salvation that we praise him for. And if you're saved, you ought to want to identify with him. His death, his burial, his resurrection. As a believer in Christ, showing the world that I'm dead to myself. I'm raised to walk in this new life that Christ has given me. And also by being a part of his body, the church. This is his church. It's not Brother Butch's church. It makes me mad when somebody says, where are you going to church? I'm going with Brother Butch's church. It's not Brother Butch's church. Check the bylaws, whatever. 
It's not there. It's his church. And we show the world how important it is when we as believers band together. And let me tell you something, it's going to be more important as the days go by. And so we need to take that stand for him. Whatever that need upon your heart can be met today in Christ Jesus. We'll stand at the front. We'll receive those that come. Whatever that decision, would you make it for his glory as we stand and as we pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word, for the power of it. Lord, for what you want to do in our hearts and lives, if we'll, we'll let you do. <clears throat> Lord, I don't understand why you'd let me or anybody else grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Why you would allow us to quench the working of the Holy Spirit of God. Father, why you would allow us to hinder the working of the Holy Spirit of God. Father, we're praying that you have your way with every heart, with every life, beginning with my own. And for the decisions that need to be made, may they bring glory to you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God speaks. Will you sing and will you come? Just as I am without All three is open. The invitations extended. Was shared for Will you let go and let him have his way? That what are we coming for? We're coming for, I have a horrible condition. I come, I come, just as I God speaking. But mercy and grace, my free healing with your heart, when your life, with your life, to glory Lamb of God, I'm coming. This verse for you. Like all of heaven is waiting for your response, waiting for you to make that decision that will bring glory to Him. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, I come. Good to be back in the house of the Amen. Lord, is it Amen. not? Thank you, you may be seated. So everybody's read your bulletin, right? Just a, some of the things I want to highlight uh, because we haven't met in a while and I need practice doing the announcements. So uh, we're having baptism on Sunday the 30th at 1030, so make a note of that. Uh, in our morning uh, service. Um, also, there's an announcement of, of a prayer um, for uh, our country, an election, um, prayer warriors at morning around 7, noon, and 7 p.m. each day for us to, a reminder for us to just to pray. We need to pray, I mean, uh, for our country. God will honor it. 
Uh, and so there's an announcement there. Uh, just wanted to call your attention uh, to that. Um, also, we have, um, we're collecting um, uh, school supplies for the attic. Um, there's a box at the back of the auditorium for you to drop off your donations. Uh, we also have a list at the back tables with some suggestions as, as far as what is needed. One of the specific items requested is school box. Uh, once the kids actually go back uh, into the classrooms, there will be no sharing of supplies, so each child needs their own school box and, and a large pencil pouch. And so uh, we want to pray for our kids starting school and our teachers. I shared with my class this morning that um, school year beginning is hard in and of itself. Forget about COVID, uh, but when you bring in COVID and the pandemic and all we have going on, uh, really need to lift up our teachers and, and students as we work through this. Uh, there's a good announcement in there on the WANAs starting back up. One correction, the uh, virtual awards ceremony on uh, the 19th, which I, this is this coming Wednesday, instead of it being at 6 p.m., it's going to be at the end of the worship, our Wednesday night worship service. So I just wanted to correct that. So there's information in there on registering for Awanas and and um, uh, distance drive through Awana stores. So please make note of that, uh, and so we'll be in our right place. Thank you. See there, you hadn't forgotten how to do that, and they clap for you and everything. Way to go, Mark. You, you do need to get out by the Brother Butch's tank and get some sun on those legs, though, I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. Ooh, Robert, come pray. Let's stay. <laughs> Robert's going to lead us in a closing word of prayer, and then uh, we'll social distance on our way out. We'll sing and then uh, head out and have a, have a blessed week this week. Let's pray. From today's passage, that, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. Father, we thank you for your word and for its truth. And wherever we turn in your word, we can find that nugget that can help us no matter what we may encounter. Father, you have told us that as children of God that you indwell us with your Holy Spirit. So there is nothing that we encounter that we are left alone with. You are with us, Lord. You are beside us. You are, you are always there. Help us, Father, to recognize that we are not like the world. Help us to remember that you call us to be that light to the world, to be placed up on high, to be in a place where people can see with clarity the light, the love, the grace, the mercy that you have given to us and that you have available to everyone. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and for the sacrifice that he has made for not only us, but for the world. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make